you guys have a pen, phones, everything, I would like for you guys to take this down. I want you to understand this in this order. Guard your purity with God's instruction. Number two, seek him with your whole heart. Not half your heart, not part of your heart, your whole heart. Whole heart. Fill your heart with his word. Fill it. God honors his word. That is the only thing he honors is faith and his word. You remind God of his word, and it's not because he needs to be reminded. You remind him so he understands that it's embedded in your heart. You're not just reading it from the book because it won't depart from you. His word will never leave you. I still remember scriptures from when I was young as a, as a little kid, little scriptures. And number four, praise. Praise. Things are going to happen in life. Mistakes are going to be made. But we can't forget to give praise where praise is due because when you wake up and you have breath, you have another opportunity to make it right. I'm not saying it's going to be easy, but the position that you put yourself in definitely will determine your outcome. You're strong enough to overcome the impulses. If you allow certain people in your life to hold you accountable, your walk will be that much easier. Do you, you guys get what I'm saying? When you live a life of no accountability, that gives you the right to live your life the way you see fit and do and make the decisions that you need to make because you're not going to listen to what anybody else has to say. Me, I have accountability partners in my life. I have them in my life. I have people that hold me accountable in my finances. I have people that hold me accountable in staying committed in my marriage. And most of you guys will say, think, well, why do you need that for? Because there's a real enemy out there who's out to steal, to kill and destroy. That's the reality. He wants to steal your purity. He wants to steal your health. He wants to steal your finances. He wants to steal what God had for you that he had designed for you at birth. He already wants to take from you what you haven't received yet. He's the insecure one. And when you understand that the insecurity lies in him and that God equips you, he equips you in his word. In Romans 14, 12, it says, so then each of us will give account of ourselves to God. Our actions have consequences on this earth and in eternity. On earth and in eternity. Earth. Earthly consequences, earthly consequences. Perfect example, sex outside of marriage. Potentially you can get pregnant. Who suffers there? The guy, it's simple. But the girl who looks at the guy because you, you looked at him to be your knight in shining armor and he comes in, he takes something from the you can't, you can't get back. He doesn't have the ability to provide for the child that is getting ready to come into this world. And guess what? You're left to figure it out. You are. And he'll be on to the next victim. Three in 10 teen American girls will get pregnant at least once before the age 20. That's nearly 750,000 teen pregnancies every year. I think there should be a little bit more whistling going on in that. That is a very high number. 750,000 pregnancies a year. New estimates show that there are about 20 million new sexually transmitted infections in the United States each year. Young people between the ages of 15 to 24 account for 50% of all new STDs, although they represent just 25% of the sexually experienced population of 46% of American high school students who have had intercourse and potentially are at risk for HIV and other STDs. So what does that, so what does Jesus want for you? Does Jesus want 
that for you? Because in John 10.10, 10, he says, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it again abundantly. It can have a lifelong consequence. One act of impulse. One act. Just one act. Why? So you can show that guy that you're committed? No, I'm committed to this relationship. If anybody is pressuring you to break your covenant with God, you need to break it off with them. A real man of God seeks God first and that's how he finds you. That's what real men do. They stand on the front lines and they protect what they love. Real men have jobs, they're providers. We are bred to provide. This society, it, it, it was never designed for women to have to do what a man and what God told man his job was. And women do do it well, they do. But it was never designed that way. But you know what, that's become acceptable. So the next time that somebody tries spitting game at you and trying to say, no, like, oh girl, it ain't even like that, it ain't even like that. Say, you know what? Quote me a scripture verse, and not something that was taught from the very beginning. Tell him to give you something of substance, because whatever he's trying to present, it's not working. It's really not. Now, fellas, the fellas that are in here, don't use that to your advantage and try to go look up all these scriptures and stuff, because you guys ain't slick. How can we keep pure? By obeying it according to to your word. That's what Psalm 119.9 says. By obeying it according to your word. We have to guard it. Number one. Guard it. Don't get your eyes off of it. Understand that it's a, it is a gift. And gifts are given and they're stolen. Number two. You protect it. Your legacy depends on it. The legacy of your children depend on it. Do you know that the very decision that you could make when you decide in your heart that you want to reproduce, you could very easily pass that on and your son could be a sex act before he even comes into this world. So you, the decision that you think that you're making, the decision that you're like, oh, no, no, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. No, it has a lifelong consequence. And number three, honor it. I'm going to tell you this, is that someone out there had their stolen from them. They didn't have a choice. It was stolen. And they would love to be in your shoes to say that they're pure. Now they live a life of walking around dirty and they didn't have a choice about it. It is your job to be proud about being pure. It's your job to make sure that you the only thing that you should be allowing to impregnate you is the word of God so that it can come alive so that you can infect other people with it because you're going to save lives. And whatever lie the enemy's told you, if you've made the mistake, it's not over. We serve a God of grace. We serve a God of love. He doesn't care. If you come to him and you say, Jesus, I messed up. Jesus, I thought I was doing the right thing, but I need you to make me clean again. Going back to my friend, his situation took a drastic turn for the worse. It took a drastic turn. He had, he lost his job. He was in a relationship to where it became physically abusive on his part. He wasn't the abuser. He was the abused because he was raised not to put his hands on a woman. And she felt like it was okay. And he literally thought in his mind, oh, you know what? She's the one that accepted me. She's the one that loved me. So if this is what I have to go through so I don't have to be alone, then I'll just go through it. He has no trust in women. He, jumped, he jumped from job to job, and he's had nothing but dysfunction. He's paid tons of money in attorney fees. He had to go bankrupt. 
Had he waited for the woman that God created for him, his story would have been a lot different. If you put God first, you'll never thirst. You have the choice. What are you going to allow to quench your thirst? What do you choose? Because God, this world, when you see disaster, when you see all of these things happening, people are quick to blame it on God. They're quick. And God, you need to understand that God sends nobody to hell. People send themselves to hell. You have a choice whether you're going to go up or whether you're going to go down. The choice is yours. You can't blame God. I have daughters, and this perspective, it changed for me when I had her. She was my first daughter. And the way that I viewed women because, you know, my mom was abusive and this and, you know, and going through all these things. And I looked at it, and I said, man, God, I'm like, you know, I don't want my little girl to see that. I don't want her to grow up like that. He said, okay, Stephen, you make the choice. You make the choice that when your daughter comes, that you're going to show her a father's love, that you're going to show her what it means to be pure, what it means to be a woman of God. And you know, the thing that makes me the most proud is I know that I'm not the perfect father and I know that I fail. But when my daughter tells me, says, Dad, you know what? I need to be under your leadership, not just under your own, but I need to be under your leadership because if I am, I know that I'm going to grow. That is the most important gift that God could have ever given me is to be able to impact, because you know what? You can be out there trying to impact the world, and you're not even impacting the ones that are close to you. Sam, I want you to come up here and join me. Everybody give Sam Hill a round of applause. <laughs> Sam is going to break it down his way and pour into you guys what God put in his heart on how he can relate purity. If you guys remember anything out of this message, remember, you do have a choice. What you did in your past does not define you, nor does it determine where you're going. Understand that if anybody asks you to give up the gift that God gave you, they're not worthy to be in your world. Well, in Lockwood, 